Let's talk late summer glide bait fishing. Now normally, I'd be throwing glides from the boat, not from the bank. But the boat is grounded. I've got to fix it. Uh, trolling motor's got some issues, but you didn't really come here to hear about that or hear about my issues or problems. So, glide bait fishing, late summer. How do you go about doing it? And especially from the bank. From the bank is very tough. I am a big fan, a big proponent of floating glide baits. Something I can kind of crank down or a very slow sink if I'm on the bank. And that is because I don't feel like losing a glide bait. And I think a lot of people, a lot of guys and girls that, you know, fish from the bank, they don't throw glide baits and they don't throw big baits because they kind of intimidate them and they also don't want to lose them. So something that is kind of like a crank down or a floating model, just because it says floating model does not mean that it's going to stay at the surface the entire time. It may not even have a lip on it and it will still crank down. There was lightning over there. Outstanding. So, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna bomb that glide bait out there as far as I can go, okay? Now this one is a very slow sink. This is the Bait Sanity Explorer Glide. It does crank down a little bit. It's got a very tight kind of action, tight kind of swim. And what I'm gonna do with this and most glide baits in the summertime is I'm gonna try and find grass lines and I'm going to try and work it erratically along the grass lines. Got one, got one. Oh, where are you? Okay, that's a good one too. Oh, she's not hooked too well. She's not hooked too well. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. Ah! Oh, I almost flipped her right out. That's why we don't boat flip. So when I'm working a grass line, I'm going to be doing handle chops dependent on the glide bait that I'm using. Oh, buddy, buddy, where did you come from? <laughs> How sick was that? Oh my gosh, how freaking sick was that? Some other glide baits like your S waivers, your Mega Bass I slides, they respond better to a rod twitch. Kind of like bumping that rod down, almost like walking the dog, but it's slow and methodical. And what you want to do is you got to have a little bit of slack in the line because if you're doing that and your line is tight, that glide bait is just going to kind of pull forward, kind of like a jerk bait. And there's thunder. <laughs> we may be wrapping this up a little sooner than planned. It said it wasn't going to rain until like 3 a.m. But either way, either here nor there, that's the third lightning strike over there. I might turn the camera the other way just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. There. That's better. Now, as I was saying, what was I saying? Anybody remember? Because I sure don't. I do not remember at all. Either way, grass line is working kind of erratic like. Now for open water, if I know that I'm not dealing with any kind of like structure, any kind of grass, anything like that, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to find a glide that's got a wider glide, a, a slower action, a really methodical, just lazy kind of S motion. That's what I like for open water. I want to present a big, slow mo moving meal moving slow moving meal to those fish that are looking for something to eat late summer and just kind of like begin their fall feed with a bang so i'm going to just slowly wind an open water glide that has got a really wide motion to it that is what i'm going to do
that's a good fish. That's a good fish. Oh my, she's trying to shake it. Please don't shake that. On your crank downs, because not all glide baits are just, you know, no lip glide baits in my opinion. There are crank down glide baits. And I'm talking crank downs with a lip. And I've got one with me that I'm gonna throw here in a second. Did you see that? You see that lightning? So as I was saying, a crank bait or <laughs> a crank down glide bait. This is the Imakatsu Baby Gilroyd. I have the wedge tail on there and you can see it does have a lip, okay? So it does have a lip. This is a crank down. It will crank down to about five or six foot, dependent on the line that you're using. And line, line, rod, all that, that's a whole nother conversation that I'm not gonna get into today. I will get into it on my channel over at Oklahoma's Worst Angler on YouTube. But with a crank down like this, I know it is a slow float. So as soon as that hits the water, I wanna crank it down to depth. I wanna crank it down and then I want to slowly start winding it. With that big wedge tail on there, it's got a lot of thump. It's going to be really slow moving. Look like a big, easy meal for those bass. And then if I start hitting any kind of structure, any kind of grass, I'm going to stop retrieve. I'm going to stop the retrieve. I'm going to kind of pull my rod out like this, let the line go slack, let that float up. Most of the time on that slow rise, that is when you're going to get hit. That is when those bass will strike because you kind of tick that grass, they're down in that grass, they're gonna shoot up and just smash that thing, which is what I was kind of hoping for today, but kind of wondering if this uh, storm doesn't have them pushed down. We may be a little too prefrontal, who knows? Now, the nice thing about like a crank down with a lip is because they are going to float whether it be a fast float or a slow float, you can work those things kind of aggressively. You can crank them down to depth really quick and then stop them. Just stop it, give your rod, you know, like give that line a little bit of slack so it helps that bait kind of float back, okay? Especially if you're hitting any kind of structure, any kind of grass, any kind of cover, anything, stick that rod out there and just give that line slack so that bait can float backwards and out of there. You want to vary up your cadence too. If you're sitting there working, you know, that erratic, that erratic kind of action along those grass lines and you're getting no love, slow it down, slow it down. Same thing with the open water. If you're working it slow and nothing's happening, speed it up, get that thing burning and then kill it, burn it and kill it. Now, if you know your waters and you know the kind of structure, obstacles, anything like that that you're dealing with, then you can, you know, go ahead. Get something that's gonna sink a little bit faster. Get something that you can work a little bit faster that might be, you know, a little more appealing to those bass to eat. Big glide baits and big swim bait fishing is tough. It is tough. The payoff, in my mind, in my opinion, what the payoff is, the payoff is the bite. It is the way that they eat these things to where they just want to murder it and I absolutely love it. Those fish that eat those, eat those bigger baits, tend to be more aggressive too. So the fight is even better. Not only are you dealing with the fight of bringing that bigger lure back, but then you've got a fish attached to it as well. And that's where it can get a lot of fun. Oh, that's another one, but that ain't the one. That is not the one that came out. But this is not a style of fishing that you just go out and you absolutely destroy them all the time. This is, I mean, don't let YouTube fool you. Okay, there are days, months, and I mean, just hours and hours and hours on end with no bite. But when you get it, I'm telling you, the reward is worth it. It is just so fun. It is so different. They're so aggressive. Hey guys, I hope you liked some of that footage that I overlaid in there because, well, I mean, I already know that I'm going to because I'm not catching anything right now. And to be perfectly honest, I came out to catch some fish. So I'm going to pick up a jig. <laughs> I'm going to start fishing a jig because these fish are locked down 
And one of the big reasons that I think has them locked down besides the storm, these birds. There are birds just pelting the water right now. Picking up bugs, picking up anything that's on top of that water, little bits of bait, little bait fish, and it spooks those bass off. I'm telling you. In these small farm ponds like this, they when they'll normally hit top water or be feeding aggressively, they will not when these birds are doing this. I mean, can you, I don't know if you can see all these birds. So that's not bait busting out there. Those are all birds that are hitting the water. I'm telling you, it's got the bass spooked. I go and throw a bait in there and those birds just come after it too. So with that being said, guys, thank you for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. If you are not subscribed to the Monster Bass channel already, please do so. We are coming out with a bunch of great content, not just tutorials, not just how-tos, but just some good old fashioned fishing and catching. That's what we're bringing. We're bringing it back. There's a whole lot of like teaching and that's great. I love, I love lessons. I love gold. I love lessons. I love learning more. But me personally, I just love catching. And I love, love to see people catching. So, that's what we're coming out with. We're bringing it back. Hope you guys liked it. Let me know down in the comments if this helped you out at all. Or if you have any more questions, I will more than happily answer you. And, uh... Like I said, head over to my channel. It's been kind of dead lately. I suck, but we're getting back after it. So I will see you guys next time. We are on the water. We are? Who says that? Whatever. You know what, guys? We'll catch some fish. So I'll see you next time on the water. looking kind of nasty out here I think I might get rained on I might get stormed on I might be driving back in a tornado <laughs>